Okay, so in this video we want to talk about solving quadratic inequalities. Um, we don't talk about this um, prior to Year 11 uh, methods. Um, one of the misleading things we do throughout Year 7, 8, 9 and 10 is we, f we continuously um, look at solving linear inequalities. And we learn about, we can we just solve them in the same way we do an equation except when we're multiplying or dividing by negative and then we flip the sign and everything's fine. So it's not really very different. However, that only works for linear inequalities. Every other kind of inequality, a quadratic inequality, a cubic inequality, an exponential inequality, a logarithmic inequality, a sine or cos or tan inequality, whatever it might be, um, you must consider a graph. And for some reason, it doesn't matter how bold I make this text or what font I choose or whether I underline it or whether I italicize it. Every student seems to think that they can get away. They're going to be able to do this without having to think about the graph. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to draw a, one, a, particular, a super precise, perfect graph, but you must be able to visualize it and think about what it looks like in order to be able to answer the question. Let's deal with a really simple quadratic inequality before we have a look at the examples here. So let's say we want to look at x squared um, greater than, well, yeah, yeah, no, let's do greater than or equal to 4, for example. It's always easier to deal with any nonlinear inequality if you make one side of the inequality zero, and you'll see why in a minute. So if I make um, one side, of, oh, actually before I get to that, the temptation here will be to take the square root of both sides of the inequality because if this was an equation, I could just take the square root and x equals plus or minus four. The problem we have is if that's an inequality, this no longer makes sense. What does that even mean? You're saying, well, x ha could be bigger than or equal to negative four, so it could equal negative four and anything bigger than that but it also could be bigger than or equal to positive four. So does that mean it's only these values up here? Does that mean it's everything between negative four, everything just bigger, or is it everything bigger than or equal to negative four? It doesn't really tell us anything and it's actually not correct. Let's have a look at what the actual solution is. Let's use our CAS to solve it and then let's work our way back a bit. So menu three one for solving. Um, if we were to solve x squared greater than or equal to 4, comma x, oh, sorry, comma x, we get, oh, sorry, I wrote plus minus 4, my apologies. So plus minus 2, so if these were 2, okay, same, same, the same issues arise, my apologies. Um, we get x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is bigger than or equal to positive 2. So actually, the solutions are those numbers there and those numbers down there. Okay. All right. So what we what we actually need to think about, and in this simple example of an inequality, some of you might be going, well, I, that makes sense to me because when you get negative 2 as a solution here, you divide it by negative 2 and so you should have flipped the sign and so that's why it's less than or equal to negative 2. And that does make sense, but that's going to fall apart if the, well, not fall apart, but that's going to be difficult to think of inequalities always in that way if you've got um, a more complicated quadratic function. Okay. So what we actually want to be able to do is always think of these in terms of a graph. Now let's go, let's take another step further back. Every single equation you solve has a graphical implication. Graphical, yeah, you can think about it graphically. So if you're solving the equation 2x plus 1 equals 5, what you're asking yourself graphically is where does the line y equals 2x plus 1 intersect with the line y equals 5? That's what you're doing. That's graphically what the solution represents. So 2x plus 1, you know, gradient of, uh, let's try and get some numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, uh, so it's going to go through there and there, there's y equals 2x plus 1, there's, let's try getting that a bit straighter, there's y equals 5, this x value here, that is the solution to this equation. So 2x plus 1 equals 5, 2x plus 1 equals 5, 2x equals 4, x equals 2, that is x equals 2. Okay, So that's what we're doing. So we want to use the same kind of idea 
to solve a quadratic inequality. So it's always easier with the quadratics or anything more complicated than linear, it's always easier to try and think of it relative to zero. So rather than think about x squared, so we're not going to do it this way. So it's x squared greater than or equal to four. Rather than think about that, it's going to, we're going to write as x squared minus four is greater than or equal to zero. Let's think before we get onto that, let's think about the graphical application of that. So that is, where does the graph of y equals x squared minus four intersect with the graph of y equals zero, which is the x-axis, which is why it's always easier to make one side zero, because then you're always comparing to the x-axis, okay? So y equals x squared minus four, well that's a parabola translated down by four, okay? And I should have drawn that, I'll draw that in red, just to be clear about which graph we're talking about. So parabola translated down by four, and again, it doesn't need to be a perfectly precise graph, we're just getting a sense of what's happening here. So that is y equals zero. This is y equals x squared minus four. So if we wanna know where they are equal to each other, they're equal to each other here and here. That's where they equal each other. And we can find that by solving, finding the x-intercept. So we make that equal to zero and we get x squared equals four and we get x is plus minus two, okay? So that's negative two and that's positive two. So that's when they're equal to each other. But the question isn't about when they're equal to each other. It's about when is x squared minus four greater than or equal to zero, okay? So when is the parabola greater than or equal to the x-axis? So it's gonna be equal to the equal to zero at those values. And it's greater than zero there. So in terms of the question isn't which y values is it greater than zero for, we know it's greater than zero when y is greater than zero. And the question is what x values make the quadratic expression bigger than or equal to zero. So it would be for these x values out here, if you sub in any of those x values, you get a positive y value. Okay, sorry, that wasn't the way to do it. You get a positive y value. Similarly, if we sub in any of those x values down there, we get a, a positive y value. Okay. So if x is anything bigger than or equal to two, subbing that into this expression will result in something positive. Similarly, if x is anything less than or equal to negative two, we'll get subbing that into this expression, we'll get something bigger than zero. So the solution is that x is less than or equal to negative two, or that x is bigger than or equal to two. We would never write the word and here because there is no value of x that is both less than or equal to two and also bigger than or equal to two. So if we write and, there's actually, we're saying there's no solutions, okay? So it's either in that category or in that category, okay? So you must think about a graph. If the question had been, when is x squared minus four less than zero, okay? That parabola is below the x-axis um, I'm running out of colored pens here. It's below the x-axis, not at that point, not at that point, but everywhere down here. So it's for x values that are between negative two and two. It wouldn't include two because when x equals two, the value, the parabola equals zero and we want it to be less than zero, but anything up to two and anything um, bigger than negative two would um, fit that criteria. Okay, so you have to think about a graph. It's really just about, it's not a perfectly precise parabola. It's the key things are, does the parabola go this way or this way? And where are the x-intercepts? That's what's important, okay? So let's have a look at these examples. We want to solve x squared plus seven x plus 12 less than zero, okay? So we want to consider the graph of y equals x squared plus seven x plus 12 which if we factorize that, that's x plus three, x plus four. Factorizing it's helpful because that's gonna give us the x-intercepts. So the graph has x-intercepts at negative three and negative four, and it's a happy shape parabola. So again, I'm not doesn't need to be perfectly precise. I just wanna be able to think about where are those x-intercepts and which way up does it go? Now we want that parabola to be less than zero, okay? So it is less than zero, not here, not here, but between here is where the parabola is less than zero. So that corresponds to the x values between four and three. 
So if x is anything between negative four, sorry, negative four and negative three. If x is anything between negative four and negative three, when that value is substituted into this quadratic, it will produce a negative y value, hence it will be less than zero. Okay, so there's our solutions there. Let's have a think about example two. We want to solve negative x squared plus eight x minus 10 less than or equal to two. Always easier to make one side zero so that we are comparing to the x-axis, the line y equals zero, okay? Um, so I'm gonna take away two. So we've got negative x squared plus eight x take away 12 is less than or equal to zero. This negative here makes the factorizing and the solving much more complicated. Let's make it a monic quadratic by multiplying everything by negative one. So that becomes positive x squared minus 8x plus 12. And we multiply by negative 1, so we reverse the inequality. It has to be bigger than 0. Okay. So these are all equivalent inequalities. All three of these inequalities have the same solutions. So in solving that inequality, we're also going to be solving that inequality. Okay. So we want to consider the graph of... We need to consider the graph of y equals x squared minus 8x plus 12. I don't need you to write that sentence down. You can just do it, okay? Um, but I'm just being clear about what we're doing. So we want to consider that graph. Um, so it's really, we want to factorize if we can because that's going to allow us to see the x-intercept. So factors of positive 12 that add up to negative 8 are going to be negative 2 and negative 6. So this would have x-intercepts at 2 and 6. And again, this is a happy parabola, okay? So um, 2 and 6 and happy parabola, 6 and 2. And we want that parabola to be bigger than or equal to 0, which means up there, which means where x is 6 or more or 2 or less. Okay. So it's going to be when x is less than or equal to 2. If x equals 2, it will equal 0, which is fine. Anything less than 2 will make sure um, if we sub it into this expression it's a positive value or anything 6 or above okay, will also work. Just to be clear, if you had not gone to that extra step like I did and if you had instead considered the graph of negative x squared plus 8x minus 12, that graph just would have had the same x-intercepts but gone this way, okay? 2 and 6. And in that inequality, you needed to know when that parabola was less than or equal to zero, um, which was also here and here. So I'm not, I'm not changing the question by thinking, by rewriting it this way. I'm just rewriting it in a way that's going to make it easier for me to solve it. It's easier for me to think about factorizing this and not where I have to worry about the negative, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, it's, you would still get the same solutions if you had drawn the graph of that parabola and considered where that parabola was below, on or below the x-axis. You'd get the same solutions as we got when we considered that parabola and looked at where it was on or above the x-axis because they're just mirror images of each other. Okay, I just it's easier to. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to erase that. I didn't mean to. Um, it's exactly the same question. I'm not trying to change the question. I'm just manipulating it into the easiest possible form for me to sketch the parabola and then hence be able to answer the question. Okay, let's have a look at example three, the final example here. Um, solve x squared minus 8x plus 21 greater than zero. Okay, so we need to consider... We don't, I'm not going to rearrange that at all. We've already got zero here. It's got positive x squared here. So we want to consider the graph of y equals x squared minus 8x plus 21. Factors of positive 21 that add up to negative 8, well, they don't exist. So I've got to think about the x-intercepts of this graph, but it doesn't factorize nicely, so it's going to be a bit more tedious than that. I perhaps should have given us a bit more space here, so just write small. Um, so we want to find x-intercepts. We let y equal 0. We solve um, the quadratic. Easiest way for us to do that is factorize that quadratic and use the null factor law, but it doesn't factorize, and so we need quadratic formula. Um, so x is going to be uh, negative, or, or we could complete the square, um, whichever you prefer. In fact, we haven't reviewed quadratic formula yet this year, so for now I might complete the square, but personally I would always um, choose quadratic formula over completing the square if I'm trying to solve. 
So completing the square, this is x squared minus 8x, half of negative 8 is negative 4, and squaring that is plus 16. Take away 16 plus 21. So I've created my perfect square. It is x minus half of that negative 8, so x minus 4 all squared. And then I've got minus 16 and plus 21 out there. Minus 16 plus 21, that's going to be plus 5. Um, and so solving that, ah, this is why it doesn't factorise. Solving that, if I take away 5, negative 5 equals x minus 4 all squared. Take the square root, x minus 4 equals plus or minus square root negative 5, which is can't square root a negative. So there are actually no x-intercepts here. Okay? We know that the turning point is at 4, 5. Okay? So it is a happy parabola with its turning point at 4, 5. So if we were to draw the graph, it looks something like that. So we want to know where this quadratic is bigger than 0. This quadratic is bigger than 0. Here's y equals 0 here. This quadratic is bigger than 0 for everywhere, for all x values. Okay? And again, we'll talk about a way to represent that um, in a subsequent topic. We'll look more about set notation, how we describe that. But for now, I would probably say um, solving that. Um, so I'd say that x squared, sorry, x squared minus 8x plus 21 is bigger than 0 for all x values. Okay. Um, for those who are familiar, we can write the solution as x is an element of all real numbers. That's what that means. But um, I haven't we haven't introduced that this year, so um, I'm not, and I don't teach that in Year Ten, so I'm not going to refer to that. We'll just say for now that that quadratic is going to be bigger than zero for all x values. So we could sub any value of x in there, and it would produce a positive um, a positive value, and hence it would be bigger than zero. Okay, so um, some work there in um, solving quadratic inequalities um, from exercise 3G.